Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, October 8th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 714. And I'm doing this trying to be really quickly because we have to welcome back a long-awaited returning guest. Adrian! Daddy! Hello. So great to hear you guys. <laughs> Daddy's back, baby. Thank you guys for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for, for coming back and joining us. It's been a while. It's been a while. It has been a, wow. been a, been a year or more, isn't it? Uh, well, it's been longer than a year, I think. Yeah, so the last time you were with us, it was uh, 190 episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, my goodness. I did not realize it had been that much. Yeah, the last time we were together, we were wrapping up our Let's Talk About Sex series on what porn taught us <laughs> in September. I imagine it would be a what, what, what uh, Let's Talk About Sex. I figured it was one of those. Who was it? <laughs> but hey, you know, we're coming up on an anniversary. We didn't exactly get the timing right, but I'm okay with being a little early on this one. So, Hadrian, you joined us for the very first time. For episode COL 233, the title was Depends on the Sausage You Eat. And that was October 20th, 2013. Wow, almost wow. 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, Daddy. No. We're going on <laughs> killing each other. <laughs> I've earned this Daddy title, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it's the okay. other three of us have already determined we're all Daddy Cubs. Yeah. I was gonna, yeah, that's that's what my husband calls me. It's our that's his little pet name for me is Daddy Cup. So yeah, that fits out. <laughs> Speaking of Bailey, uh, we've been we've been lurking long distance over the the time, keeping up with things. Uh, so I have a question for you. I think something became official since the last time we chatted, as in a, a legal matter. Well, we got married. I mean, we've been married for three years. But yeah, we we, we get married in uh, in uh, March of uh, t- uh, 2019. So yeah, yeah, we we're now coming nice. up on four years now. Nice. Yay. Yeah, we've been together for for almost nine, almost ten years at that point. It was like it was like a checklist item. We were like, I think we forgot something, honey. We need to go back and do this. It's like a step you forgot. I'm not familiar with that at all. <laughs> 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 at all Somebody, yeah how many Jeff years David? Married. um we were we got married two days before we celebrated our 15th anniversary wow that's quite that yeah. is quite an overdue to-do list isn't it yeah yeah it's weird because <laughs> it you know we moved in together in 2015 and that was you know a milestone thing in and of itself and gosh we decided, well, I proposed, but it was one of these situations where it was post, no, well, not post COVID, but like cus- ending cusp of COVID in a sense and all this stuff was going on and, and in our lives and, and um, health wise and what have you. And we just decided, I decided at least to move forward with it. And then this past June, we officially got married. Um, so yeah. So yay. Yay. That's fantastic. Under- Congratulations. Thank you. I, I understand though, the, the 
taking time and and waiting just a little bit until maybe maybe waiting until it's just right. That's and, I think and the way to have been teased <laughs> by some of your co-hosts for years, years and years and years, <laughs> mm-hmm. because we've been viewing this show for over for a, a long decade. time. Right. Yeah, it's been quite a while. I've been doing this longer than that, but still, this generation. Yeah, we've we've been around for a little while. So I just wanted to, like, give the shout out and recognition, because I don't know if we had talked about it before. Maybe we had, but, you know, Bailey's been a significant part of your life for a long time now and is such a sweetheart. So, um, and you two are quite the peas in the pod uh, in your, your doings. And it's just good to see that you guys are are so uh flourishing together i think is the way i, I like you. to look at it yeah we've been pretty good yeah and we've relocated to palm springs we've been out here for about uh 10 months now and that's been really oh, nice wow. Our, we had a place in we've had a place in glendale in la and during the rainstorms in january it kind of flooded out a little bit so we're like okay time to move so but we're really enjoying palm springs it's been really nice out here we're we're housemates with uh venice cub and his husband actually oh oh all right, now that explains something because we we lurked and we saw that there was some stuff online and we were like, hmm, like it's good to know that they're, you know, still connected and friends and all that. We just didn't know that that's what happened, that there was a whole move in. Process. Yeah, that part right. I di- we didn't know about. That's that's kind of fun. Um, they have a nice little four bedroom house, nice and big, big yard, big, big pool, hot tub, solar panels, dogs, and we, it's plenty comfortable. And we're we're having a really good time. Yay! Bailey is certainly living his best life. He gets to live with two of his favorite porn stars, and you know, one of the coolest people ever, Anthony. So yeah, we're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you were to tell me all those years ago when we started having you on the podcast, even when we when we you and I met in person, I could have never imagined that, like. Especially the interview that we did in your house in Florida, I wouldn't have been able to predict and been like, hey, you know what's going to happen in a number of years? Like the most infamous like coupling of your adult career kind of at that time, I feel like is going to become your housemate <laughs> and like your your family, basically, um, in, a, in yes. a stronger way. That would not have crossed my mind either. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> So it just goes to show you never know what's going to happen. So, yeah, the the relocation is something I kind of pieced together this year. I was like, I it was the backgrounds that was kind of cluing me in. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like, and, and I think it was also, um, as we mentioned in pre-show about the, the CCBC and Western Exposure with Wes and the gang and that kind of stuff. And I was like, he seems to be there pretty frequently. Um, and then uh, there is your... Uh, well, we'll get into what you've been doing of late. Um, but there was a video that you were a part of. Actually, I think more than one video with a certain um, person who does shaving. Oh, yes. yes. He's based in Palm Springs. Yes. Yeah. And That's so right. I was like, hmm. And I'm like, well, technically Palm Springs isn't that far away. But, you know. I was like, that, that's a lot of trips. So that's what the I was like. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was, I was curious about it. I was sitting there. I wasn't doing the full on math, but it was becoming a little bit more obvious, a little bit like just because there was a lot of like, we're in Palm Springs, we're doing things. And I'm like, I know, like, like you said, like Gary said, like you're, they're close, but like normally when, when I was thinking of you being in Palm Springs, I was thinking of you doing the, the CCP stuff and Western Exposure stuff right. and the event stuff. So it's like, that's a lot of events for you to be there like that often. And I was like, Something's... I mean, if it, it could, you know, the way, you know, porn is done or what have you is done. Like you can record several videos over the course of a weekend, if that's what you're doing, of right. course. So that was where I was like, okay, well maybe he's there for the weekend and he's well, recording a bunch of stuff and yada, yada. So, right. Well, to be fair, we were coming out here that often just before. Weston not just only has the events in, he has Western Exposure in April and October. Those are the big events. Mm-hmm. But he has an event almost every single month. We've got a Christmas event, a July event. Uh, we've got a tag team event for creators in May. Um, there's a puppy event. There's a XXL, which is for bigger guys. There's Dad Fest. There's a different, slightly different variations on a theme of, of the whole, you know, Western Exposure. And those are almost every month. So we were coming out here to help out with those and, like, and you know, and volunteer every single month in, in mm. the year leading up to us actually coming out here. So it was kind of a shoe in to say, well, we're going out there all the time anyway, and here's an opportunity. So here we go. 
Nice. So yeah. speaking of Western exposure, um, for those that don't know, uh, Wes uh, is is known in certain circles, understandably, um, and is uh, by by reported by all quite the the sweetheart, and was part of a dynamic duo that came up with the the idea of that, and it's flourished, and now there's an East Coast um, kind of satellite location for events in that. So. There is. The tell Eastern me a exposure bit. in Augusta, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what that's been like, because it seems like you've probably been in since the very beginning um, of its of its birth. I remember that you were a model in some of the early uh, representation of the, the imaging. Yes. Uh, West West and uh, Brian Hill came up with Western exposure some years ago. And uh, now Jesse Lucerno, uh, Vegas Daddy Bear, is now also involved in there. He's also part of that. And they're they're doing really great work, and they're they're really keeping the you know the the playtime and campground feel of it a little bit still going on at CCBC, and they're looking to other other events. That's why they have the one in Augusta that's happening at the Parliament House there, I believe. And um, I mean, they're, they're looking for more. I think they're looking for more spaces to do that kind of thing. There's there is it's a bit of a um, it's a it's a synergy a community event that kind of brings everyone together and isn't really for bears or big guys or skinny guys or married guys or whatever they are it's just hey here's a space come play in it and you don't have to leave or go anywhere else you can just do it all right here on the same property that's kind of the idea and they're they're um, they've got some real magic going on i'm really happy with it they, it's a lot of art there's a lot like a uh, bear pad is involved he's a great artist uh mark wolfgar as you mentioned my art was in my uses my visage was used in his art early on where they were creating some of the posters um West is bringing art together. He's bringing really fantastic DJs into the space. Um, he's diversifying it across just getting people together. As I mentioned, he's now running the Mount event. They're also doing that. I think there's a there's a fisting event on the horizon, and there's puppy events. I mean, there's it's all a spinning prism of color, and there's all different takes on the the sexuality of bears and and big men and just gay men in general. And yeah. it's uh, it's 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 more than it used to be. And I think West has really tapped into that. Speaking of uh, fisting and. <laughs> Sex of big men. There's 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 a connection behind here. Wow. I might not be it explicit, but I'm threading a needle uh, for Are those that know the facts. I am. Uh, recently, uh, Wes had a podcast live poolside recording um, at an event. The infamous uh, Big Dipper and uh, Meatball the Drag Queen, who do Sloppy Seconds as a podcast at a recording. I've been a fan of theirs for a number of years. So it was ironic to like hear their podcast and understand the context, but also have like other knowledge of the history of how this whole thing came about and, and it's uh, workings from, you know, just a, a thousands of miles away perspective. It was a, uh, it was really nice to see that coming together. Um, we'll, we'll get more podcasts into the event. I think there's a lot to be said for, for live, live casting from it and uh, giving people a little peek of what's going on. Cause it's, it's very private and we're all running around naked. So you can only say so much, but that's yeah. certainly a nice little little uh, little promo in then. Yeah, no, it was a uh, it was it was really good in that case. Um, so, with that uh, being said, I I want to talk. No, no, this, I just want to pause. Big Dipper and Meatball were fucking amazing, by the way. I was there for that event, and they were super awesome. They were really cool. They they really livened up the whole entire pool side. Really, I would I would love to have them out again. That was really fun. I think I think Wes liked them too. I hope so. Yeah. Um. I mean, I their their personalities are very fun. Um, meatballs just like outrageous um you know it is just wild and my favorite thing about them as a dynamic duo is that they're they're podcast hosts as friends so they're not like they don't they're not the type of people that hang out outside of that like if i'm if i'm in damon's area or even jeff's area like i would probably hang out with them those two really kind of keep it more to the business so it cracks me up when they do the show and they were there for western exposure and they're like trying to talk to each other very openly about the fact that they need to know each other's location because they do not want to see each other naked nor <laughs> accidentally have like an interaction like next to each other or whatever which was right. killing me because i was like i was like i could i can understand that but a lot of people would presume like oh well you know they're two self-identified gay men like they probably have done all sorts of things you know and it's like mm, some people mm. draw boundaries <laughs> yeah yes no, no, fucking funny your friends. That's that's a that's a boundary we can let go of. I think fucking funny your friends. It's okay. <laughs> if you can't fucking funny your friends, who are you supposed to fuck in front of? Well, speaking of fucking You're in front here. of your friends, uh, let's talk about your career change. Um, yes, 
So this kind of ties into a thing I really wanted to touch base with you about, Hadrian. The last time you were on, or the last couple times, it's been a while, we had this discussion about the changing landscape of adult media and the whole shift away from like the professional production side of things into this home space. Um, as you had messaged with me, we, uh, we, we unintentionally at the time did a shout out about Chatterbait, but they found out and they like reached out to us. <laughs> Um, and we and we thank them very much for that, uh, which is kind of ironic. But I remember we we had talked about because of your experience, like how things changed and that technology was really shifting the potential. And here we are years later. And I mean, I think it was maybe in the pandemic or right before the pandemic, the running joke was like, well, Christ, everybody has an OnlyFans. Um, <laughs> but but now there's several different platforms, different you know uh, opportunities that you can self promote self develop self create and and put that stuff out there and it you know is part of what you've is shifted into so i'm very curious to know like what your thoughts are and how you made that decision because there was a time i feel like you and uh, i want to say like john thomas and some other folks who were well known from some years ago were like i don't want to say retired but we're like mm. I don't know, like there's there's got to be a time and a place and it's got to make sense for me. And I think that's really kind of shifted, it seems, in like the past couple of years. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I definitely think it's shifted for me because, well, I got laid off and um, I'm very upset about it. And I'm not thrilled with the, the prospect of being laid off and the way it happened was upset me. And my way of taking my ball and going home and saying, screw corporate work for a little while is doing porn and learning something else and saying no. I don't want to work for a company that's thousands of miles away in D.C. with too much going on that I actually have no say in and have no impact on my life in a day-to-day -day operation. As where now I've shifted into this entrepreneurial aspect where I'm dealing with people locally. I'm dealing with people in my community. I'm going on Twitter and I'm seeing coworkers. Um, it's it's been a it's been a it's been a 180 in a really harsh way from working for a telecommuting company far far away. And then when I go and I go to the bar at night, it has nothing to do with my day-to-day -day life. Versus now, the bar life and my my work day are now integrated. Those things now, those oh. things have things that are related. Those are people that are inside the same environments. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those same dramas, like something that's going on with the bar here might impact somebody's working situation here, and they may need to do porn all of a sudden. I'm like, okay, come here. Let me help you out with that. So there's there's something to be said for that kind of change for me, and I'm really embracing it and enjoying it a lot. Um, it wasn't something I was expecting, I think. Yeah. I, I think we we were able to catch on to that. Damon and I, I know it kind of talked about the the change, and um, we're, we we are uh, sad, obviously, for the shift that had to change, but we're yeah. also pleased with the output since yes. then. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just what it is. It's, it's, it's a situation where it, it sucks, but it looks like you've hit the ground running with this your like self-promotion and you're doing your own content and not only creating your own content, but also, like you said, like finding people to work with and finding these collaborations and, and making, you know, make like, I, I think I appreciate it because unlike others, and this is going to sound probably shady where they sort of like, don't know what they're doing, have like a phone and they're just like recording like whatever they can. Yours seem to, it is almost like, like to, I hate sound like it's almost like a porn, but it feels like there's effort involved and it's more than just, I mean, yes. Can you do the videos where you're like, look, like just doing a jerk off or whatever? Yeah, absolutely. But you also add more um, levels to it. If that makes sense. Like it's not just absolutely. A, like a quick jerk off video where you expect to get like a bunch of money are it's there's some expertise and professionalism there added. yes no. there's value that That's, i'm adding to it yes yeah you took things from doing professional porn and doing it into i don't i don't even want to call it amateur porn anymore yeah because it's it's really there's something in between like, amateur and professional porn right it's it's Right now, it's turned into basically you're a YouTuber, for lack of a better better word. <clears throat> you're just on a different platform that's not YouTube. 
Well, <laughs> and because well, there's lots the of like high quality videos out there on all sorts of platforms and a lot of people you know know of youtube and then when they want to go to their sexy times they go to just for fans or only fans or or something right and it's great to have those platforms for those people who want to do that type of thing and get paid for it right I think I think if I had to make up a phrase, I'd almost say like sexual media influencer sort of thing. There's there some kind go. of in between oh. amateur and professional. Yes, I definitely feel that, and I, I and I, I would say that as you're as you're looking at OnlyFans and Just for Fans, you can see and you can almost pick out the people like, oh, you've got a day job, you've got a job that pays you well, and you're doing this. And you just have to whack off and post what you did online once a week, and you're doing fine. Then you can see the people I'm like, you don't have a day job, you're doing this all the time, and this is this is what you have to do to survive. And then you can see the other people, and you can tell when they've been doing it for 30 years. Like you can see the Hunter Van Buren's who had like a website and everything else going on. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's like there's different levels of people who are engaged in it. And I think before I would have seen it as people who had a day job and people who didn't, and that was, you know, those are people who can afford to really just not do it if they don't want to. And I think I fell into that category before. Now I've fully embraced it and I've decided this is what I want to do. I've decided it is the only thing I can do. I, if I want to make this work, I've got to I've got to up my value, learn my skills. I've got to learn from other people. I've got to be open to new ideas. I have to I have to look beyond only fans and just for fans to what's next. And I have to keep. I'm going to, if I'm really going to do this, I have to own it like a business. It has to be it has to be my baby, and it has to be a pretty baby if it's going to be my baby. <laughs> so when's your Patreon launching? <laughs> mm. I'm considering it. Patreon's a lot harder nut to crack when it comes to comes to X rated material. That's true. That's yeah, they, very true. If I could put pen to paper and draw something, I'd probably do a lot better. Yeah, they have added like age verification stuff on there. Mm-hmm. The adult. Yeah, content. keeping an eye on it. Yeah, they, I'll be they, honest. They, even though I don't like the, I don't like the owner and everything, but I think Twitter will probably get my attention for content creation before Patreon will. Mm. Or the platform for their, their subscriber Twitter, model. Still their subscriber model. Home. Their subscriber model is accessible. It is. It is. It's very viewable by a lot of people. And if I could turn twenty five thousand, you know, subscribers into one dollar subscribers, that's amazing work. Mm-hmm. So there's 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 something of a built in base there, even with its really really rocky CEO. That there's there's yes. still out there. Yeah, I've, I've noticed some um, content creators that I've been, I've followed you know, for a long time that have gone to the subscriber-based pro, um, platform on Twitter. Um, and I can see the benefit, and especially if you're doing something like this where it is your career and it is what you're, like, generating funds from for, mm-hmm. it makes sense to at least attempt it right now. Now, again, because you're not going to be able to do it elsewhere. Like, I don't believe other, like, platforms have that uh, capability right now. Meaning, and not I, like, I think besides, somebody's... like, Just for Fans and OnlyFans, but, like, other, like, social media platforms. Absolutely. All of them are accessible. Even even Tumblr is now has some, some level of porn that's now available on there. Um, fighting with the different terms of service in order to get this content posted is is the is the real game being played, and that's where the money is gained and lost. Is how close can you get to the edge of those mm. terms of service to still get pub- published and and publish a lot of it and get people filtered into where the money is being made. <laughs> so speaking of that, uh, Hadrian, I think it was around September of last year, somewhere somewhere around there that I think you had posted your first OnlyFans video. If I remember correctly, and you were like, and I've already gotten my content warning, like, issue or whatever on my very first video. So that intrigued me, because I was like, of all the people that I would think that may take the time to read the terms of service and the guidelines for such a platform, you would kind of know what the ins and outs are and be like, okay, I can do this, but that's pushing the edge and this is obviously out so i was kind of surprised to see that like that happened and and i don't feel like there's a whole lot to the story other than you know maybe you were just a new content creator and they were like "Mm," like you know being being a little overzealous in there or if it's in a logarithm or who knows what so my adventure with OnlyFans and Just for Fans goes back several years. When OnlyFans first came out, I signed up for them and I was getting settled and i was getting on there and i didn't know i didn't know what to charge so i charged zero dollars at first and this was before they had a policy about zero dollars. 
Mm. And they they destroyed my whole entire account and locked me out. And even though they still continued to charge my people, even though they weren't able to give me the money or give me access to the account anymore, because they said I violated the rules by charging zero dollars. And I'm like, well, fine, give me back the account and I'll adjust. I'm like, no, it's already been decided. We've decided to cancel your account. And this is all over email. And I was like, I was nuked. And I'm like, I've been here for a month and I obviously don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I have a day job. I don't need this bullshit. Mm. So I, I ducked out. And and it wasn't until like a year and a half later that I saw that they there was like a thing about their policy changing to allow people to have zero dollar accounts so you can post for free. And I'm like, fine, but I've already I don't understand what happened to me a year, you know, five years ago when this happened. Mm-hmm. So that hurt. And so I've, I've had problems with OnlyFans before and I wasn't even doing anything risque. So you're right. A year ago, I did decide to launch the OnlyFans and I did this cool little video. I'm like, let me guys show you some of the toys I was I'm going to play with. And I could not figure out why they took down the video. I really thought they took down the video because at one point I picked up a bottle of poppers and I showed it and I said, I like using poppers sometimes. And that was it. I even Mm. clipped that part of the video and it got taken down anyway. It wasn't until, and I'm not kidding, three weeks ago, I figured out why that video was taken down because I was editing the video and I went to go post it. And um, I got to thinking about it. And I'm like, you know, I wonder... Because it's pretty easy to find out what's blocked on OnlyFans because you can go in there, type in the word. If you click the word post, it'll come up really fast. Like, here's a word that you can't use on OnlyFans. The word meet. M-E-E-T. Like, let's meet. Let's go meet at the park. You can't use that word on OnlyFans. You can't use the word piss. You can't use the word diapers. You can't use molestation. You know, there's abuse. There's some. There's a whole list of words. There's like thousands of words you're not supposed to use on OnlyFans, and some of them are straight up ridiculous. I think "meet" is a little ridiculous because I want to meet my fans, but the word they got me for, and the and the thing they got me for in the video, I finally figured out. It was a for a very brief moment I mentioned ABDL. I mentioned ABDL because I had a, I had a, a pacifier and diaper sitting on the side. I'm like, sometimes I like to play with my ABDL guys, and I moved on from the conversation because I mentioned that super briefly. They they flagged the whole entire fucking video, and it took me it took me over a wow. year to figure that out. I thought it was just the poppers, and I removed the poppers bit, and they still denied the video. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm just gonna you guys are just gonna get jerk off videos now. That's the only thing you guys can stand. It is really hard to do content on OnlyFans because they want you to have sex in a missionary position, and that's it. They don't want to they don't want to hear about any of your kinks. They don't want you to talk about it. They don't want you to communicate. If you want to be do social media or do influencing on OnlyFans. Um, you got to be careful what you want to talk about because it's worse to talk about stuff than it is to actually perform it on video. <laughs> Interesting. Sorry, that was a bit of a rant, but it's it's no. been very painful to work with them, and I'm and I'm very unhappy with their format. Hey, Adrian, that's only why we wanted you to come on here. Yes, <laughs> that sort of that sort of that makes a lot of sense. Like I'm not, I'm just there. Yeah. For for a little bit of context, OnlyFans is based in Britain. They're in the UK. And I'll be honest, whatever's been happening to that country since Brexit, they've been getting more and more conservative. Their, their conservative party is rising. They're being really shitty about stuff. But OnlyFans has been a victim of this. And they have this long list of stuff they don't want to see because they, they, they're not even part of Europe anymore. They're doing their own little Victorian thing. And they don't want to have any kind of content to do. A year and a half, they tried to purge all the X-rated content from OnlyFans. So mm. yeah. I'll be honest, just for fans, you know what? They're based right here in Arizona. They come up here to Palm Springs all the time. They do parties at CCBC. So I, I can reach those people if I need to. I'm ready to do business with them all the time. And and that's, Hadrian, that's why we wanted to have you on because you're highlighting like some of the the contradictions of like kink and just like sexuality. So like I have acquaintances that are into ABDL. It's not my bag. I'm not really interested, but I don't shit on it. Like, and I don't report them and I'm not like, like, eh, this is really fucked up or whatever. Like, it's just not my thing. And I understand contextually because I know individuals that this isn't about infantilism, like in a perverted way. Like there's, there's just a whole different concept and it relates over to a mindset and a role play like and and things of those natures Mm -hmm. and and that's the disappointing part is that um i think you know uh, mr christopher and amp on what's the safe word have gone over this for years and are still currently i think litigating against some google or alphabet whoever on shit you know how they've been you know de-escalated in the logarithm and they don't get the support and they constantly are getting strikes and bans because they're just sex educators trying to talk about subject matter and right. that's a problem yeah. and they're not even like doing anything adult so to speak right 
and, and this has showed up in other areas. Like I, I, I spent some of my summer, you know, I got laid off and I decided to sharpen my skills a little bit. And I thought, well, let me learn about chat GPT a little bit. And I got on there and I started asking it questions. And of course, I'm a dirty old man. I'm a pervert. I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm a porn star. I'm going to ask it questions that are, that are relevant to me. And I started asking, like, tell me where all the glory holes are. I'll tell you what, in March of last year, chat GPT knew what a glory hole was and where they were and could tell me. Over time, it got stupid about it. It started reducing its responses to those questions because I noticed when I would ask it questions, it would say, hey, this question might be a violation of our terms of service, but we're going to answer it anyway. And then as time went on, somebody would review those logs, whatever automated algorithm, whatever they're doing. I think they have human beings on the back end tagging all of it, and they're not American. They're just they're people overseas that are tagging the stuff to their cultural needs and they're tagging this. Oh, we don't want to answer stuff about glory holes now. And then as it went on through the months, I would ask questions about glory holes. It suddenly acts stupid. I don't know what a glory hole is. You mean like the mining thing? You mean like the thing they have at dams? It would like it would act stupid about. It. I'm like, you know what a fucking glory hole is, Chat GPT. Tell me where they are. <laughs> <laughs> so I it's need a to different, know. it's a it's a it's a different kind of of social control. It's a different kind of fascism. It's a different kind of shame. And, and, you know, it is absolutely, it's a kind of shaming they put on us by saying, oh, you're asking those questions. We're just, we don't know what those are anymore. It's one thing that for Google to say, hey, we'll give you the answer, but hey, maybe you should view these educational points first before you get down to where the list of glory holes are. Or maybe you should know where your local adult clinic is. Stuff, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Anything along those lines, rather than immediately going to, we don't know what that is, and you must be a terrible person for asking. So I get it's so so it's that's how I feel when OnlyFans strikes my content and doesn't tell me why because yeah. they don't they won't they won't tell you we took down your forty five minute video your ten gigabyte upload that took you hours to do we deleted it that fast we're not going to tell you what we're not going to give you the text we wouldn't give you the comments or anything it's all gone and we won't tell you what time signature was the problem we won't tell you what what was violated we won't tell you any of the details but you better figure it out if you want to make money on our content that's how it is and these algorithms and these terms of service limitations are basically doing this to they're chipping away at our community by saying oh you can't have those conversations yeah oh we don't know what that is that's not a part of our service anymore so imagine imagine if you imagine us in the 90s you know all I imagine all of us here did it if we had all gone online and said went to google and said um where are the cruisy places? And if the first answers hadn't been cruisingpresssex.com, squirt.org, or at least the bare mailing list, we would all have been fucking lost. It would have taken us a lot longer to figure out where those things, those kinds of resources and people were. It would, you know, it's, I mean, I'll be honest, I know, I know what my life looked like before I ever got a hold of a book called um, The Joy of Gay Sex. If, if I was a dumb teenager having sex with people I really shouldn't have been having sex with and doing things I really didn't need to be doing because I didn't know any better. And somebody gave me The Joy of Gay Sex. I'm like, oh, this is. This is structured. This makes sense. These people have already got the answers. They're already doing this. They already know how to ask for consent about these things. But I think that OnlyFans, the way the terms of service is built, and some of these chat for these AIs and that kind of stuff are coming around to our community and chipping it away at us by limiting the conversations we can have. Like, oh, you want to talk about, like some of these schools now say, oh, you want to talk about the gay community? We can talk about gay rights in the 14th Amendment, but we're not going to talk about drag queens. Mm-hmm. But we'll talk about the founding fathers who wore heels and wigs. But that's another issue. <laughs> anyway. Yes. You know. Just say it. <laughs> Facts. King Louis was fabulous. She wore a frock. <laughs> Anyways. Um, no, I mean, I think you bring up a valid point. And, and so I'm curious about something. This is, I think this has been ongoing for many, many years. But I don't know offhand. Do we still have payment system issues when it comes to adult content. And the reason why I ask is that there's been concerns over the years. I think it was um, rentboy.com or whatever, like, and there are these like, you know, crackdowns on, you know, the credit card servicing platforms Mm -hmm. and being held accountable because they become a, not a witness, but they become like a, a guilty party to them transferring money or allowing like, payments for you know fill in the blank and so i'm kind of curious if like that's still a thing to this day because i noticed like on uh, this pulls back the curtain a little bit on chatterbait you've got a number of options including i think bitcoin for like how you want to pay for tokens and so that kind of stuff always intrigues me like and, and at the same time i guess here's my question haven't we 
as like a as a sex community broadly worldwide figured out how to take control of that stuff and just be like, oh, if you're going to be that much of a pain in the ass, PayPal, Cash App, Zelle, whoever, we're like, screw you. Like, we'll do our own thing and and make it work without, you know, and I know that's not as easy to say because it it's still MasterCard, it's still Visa, it's still Amex, Discover, blah, 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 that, you know, they get held accountable. So- you're talking about a very classic collision in American culture between essentially the mothers of America, the Puritan aspects of our culture, the, the stuff that came over in the Mayflower when our country was new, and capitalism. So what happens is, uh, and you're, what you're describing is still very much a problem. It's happened in very recent history. If you look back just a few years, Tumblr, they took down all their porn. And then a few years later, I think it was Pornhub, I think, had to purge a bunch of content. Mm-hmm. They had to go through a purge. X hamster, I think, did something similar. I think we even lost a couple of sites. There's been laws that have passed. If you look at, uh, I think it's Missouri and and Louisiana right now have age verification laws that if you want to go to Pornhub, they redirect you to a state sponsored uh, age verification where you put in your Louisiana ID and it says, okay, you're 21, you can go to Pornhub now. Stupid. There's there's these kinds of systems that are coming online and these kinds of laws that are coming on that are uh, that are looking to limit access to, to porn, but. Um, what, what the Mothers of America have done to Pornhub and others, they go in there and they say, hey, we found these kinds of content in your site, and these are revenge porn. These are porn that's for sale that is encrypted or hidden in a way that normal people would see, but it's actually child porn, abuse porn, rape, whatever is going on. There's, there's always a really dark element to porn that attracts these really unsavory sides and people who are into human trafficking and, and doing really terrible things to people. There, mm-hmm. There's a dark side of it. And you're right. I would think that we as a porn community can gather our resources together and say, yes, we can lock down our porn and make it only available to legitimate people and people who want to do business, not people who want to exploit. Um, But the porn community has never received that kind of support from the tech industry. It's never received that kind of support from from legislature. It's never received that kind of support from lawyers. It's just not an attractive industry for people to work in who are smart. We get people, you know, like I'm in this industry. I like it. And there are other people like that. You know, you've got got Teddy in Hawaii and they're doing great work and trying to make it come together. But a majority of the work that's being done for porn is to restrict it. It's made to scan the video, identify people. And if it looks like this, take it down. That's right. what they're really after. They're not looking yeah. at how can we enhance porn? Oh, people are clicking on this, looking at this, they're enjoying this. No, it's about how can we stop kids from seeing it? Yeah. So you have two sides to that. You've got the porn industry, which is like, we want to make this available to as many people as possible. And as a capitalist society, they do that. And it, that means everyone in the world, not just people who are verified. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it's been. So that's how it's been through the 90s and 2000s, making it available to as many people as possible. On the other hand, you've got the Mothers of America who are like, we don't want our kids to see this. Right. And then they start defining what they do and don't want people to see. It opens up these weird conversations. And their main line of attack has never been to discuss what they do and don't want to see on porn. Their main line of attack is cut them off from having any money. And right. they usually go at it from, from uh, MasterCard and Visa. And they bring all these really bad examples and they say, oh, we found these – 15 horrible, horrible things that totally outweighs the millions of good videos you have on there that are legitimate and being paid for and are part of a commerce site. But you've got these 15 that are super terrible, and therefore we want you to just disable porn, uh, all of your Visa and MasterCard transactions for all of your porn. Yeah. And nobody ever gets in the middle of it. Because how do you how do you start breaking down that conversation with the mothers of America and say, you know, we saw this rape video, but what about this other video that just looks like rape, but it's not, it's legitimate, it's with consent, and it's something that's an industry how are you supposed to say that to a mother? Who's going to make them, who's going to make them capitulate on those conversations? Right. No one at Visa and MasterCard is. Yeah. So, so then you come down to the, the CEOs of Pornhub and next hamster and those kind of companies, and they don't want to have those conversations either. They want to take ownership of it and fix the problem. And they do. And it makes them look like they're admitting defeat. Like they're admitting, yes, we had a problem. So it's, it looks bad on the industry. Uh, it looks bad for the credit cards, and the moms look like they they saved someone, and uh-huh. that's a great narrative. That it looks that's the way it looks when it all shakes out, but it's so much more complicated and no much more nuanced than that. And those of us who are having trying to have legitimate businesses are the ones who are caught in the crossfire because <laughs> yeah. nobody wants to protect nobody wants to protect them. <laughs> yeah, and that's why can't we get why can't we get regular jobs? <laughs> yeah. That's always been the 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 issue overall. Is this ideal that 
sex work and porn is bad. It's always been Absolutely. bad. It's, it's not. It's not it's right. A, it's not whatever. It's you know goes against whatever, and that's been the problem where many of us who have kind of evolved our thinking or maybe have always thought this way are like, please, like, like allow people access so that they know better and can see things in learn about it so they're not so afraid of it. Right. And Arkin. the sexual revolution has been creeping up on us for decades and it's gotten yeah. a little bit further down the road and we're in it right now, but we're also on the cusp of a lot of changes. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Mm. Mm. And that's one of the reasons I feel I feel the call for porn right now. Like I feel like we're on the edge of some kind of, you know, the, I, the conservatives feel like they're ready to grab anybody by the back of the neck and pull everybody all back to the 50s if they can. And it feels like porn is one of those aspects that it feels like the noose is tightening. And if someone's not standing here in this industry saying, no, this is a business. We are a legitimate part of this community. We are we, we provide value. And then it, then it's yeah. not going to be hurt. And I, I think I think I can do that. Right. I would agree. Eric said in the live chat, haven't caught y'all in a bit just to chime in as someone with a JFF page. I can tell you they won't allow you to have free trials or free pages because of the payment processors. It was either MasterCard or Visa that wouldn't work. And then uh, if they offered the free content, it has to be paid for and have age verification, which goes to what you were saying earlier, Hadrian, you know, like that battle you took with them a number of years ago and they're like change on policy and all that crap. And That's right. It's really sure. unfortunate, you know, that they feel pressured to adjust, uh -huh. you know, so that they can have business, so to speak. Yeah. I'll be honest, what, what Just for Fans has, and to an, to an extent, what, what Twitter is going towards is that verified system where everybody everybody's a member. We know that's a real individual. If, if we have an individual who has multiple accounts, we know that an individual has these accounts. Um, X is really getting to where they know who has what account now, and Just for Fans was built that way. Um, he is correct. You know, the chat is correct. Um, OnlyFans is much easier about zero dollar accounts. You can do stuff for free, but the person who's posting was age verified and the person who's watching has some kind of account verification where they can see that there's some kind of, some kind of, yes, you're in the system as where yeah. OnlyFans are not only fans as where Pornhub and X hamster were more, everybody come view this porno. Right. Um, the closed systems are much more where things are going. Things are more locked down. The, the dollars and cents are more controlled and the, um, What's what I'm looking for? The the bad actors are kept out. And if they start acting like bad actors, we know who they are and what they've done. Right. Right. And that's sort of what I think is potentially beneficial overall is that should instead of like keeping it open, not closing it off so that no one has access, but closing it off to those who should not have access. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Um right. and giving the big thing is giving the reasons why they don't have access. There's a difference between like censoring as it were, or versus like fair, like you said, verifying like, Oh, you're a over 18 adult person. You can be on this site um, or 21, depending on where you are, you know, that kind of thing. And I think that's right. key. And where I, I think, yeah, like you said, like, other sites, just it's just like you can just click in and you're already good. If you don't have to create an account, like you said, if you don't have to necessarily create an account, you're to see it, then you're you're that's where the problem falls sometimes. That's right. Hmm. <laughs> well, and 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 it also gets pretty complicated because as much as we enjoy the benefits of being a United States of America, each state is its own entity. And I always try to relate this to people when they don't understand things about like the EU or the rest of the world. I'm like, the European Union is like the US, just smaller and later down the road. I'm like, it is a conglomeration brought together of different countries. The states are no different. I cross my state line, which is a border between Pennsylvania to Ohio. I'm in Damon State. Theoretically, I should know all the laws of the land because I'm in a new area when I get over there. And the reason I bring that up is that people don't realize that things can have these nuances of change. So with my job that I have now, one of the things that I provide through working through the local um, health department is free condoms to the community. But I predicted that I'm going to get pushback from people if youth have access to something like this because a concerned parent 
will turn around and say, how dare you like make Mm -hmm. this, you know, available to my, you know, teenage child. So I had to look up the law within my state as to whether or not there's anything on the books limiting prophylactics, which there isn't. But I went a step further and looked up about what is considered statutory and how that works and what the ages of consent are so that I could clearly spell that out, provide links in the FAQ. So in case anybody's really that curious, go read it, like go check it out. So you know that stuff. I know that only because I did all of that stuff. I guarantee the millions of people that live in my state that are residents, they don't know that shit. And Like, I wouldn't know that once I crossed the border into another state. So it's great to say that, like, we're trying to reach a universality, but the reality of the laws are they are so varied Mm -hmm. across the land. Who knows what you're going to do when you go someplace else? And if you're not a resident of that place, I mean, it just not to shit on the whole thing, but like, it's not it's not as simple as like people probably imagine it to be, Mm -hmm. you know, right. I think I think we would love a, a much more black and white with understandable shades of gray as opposed to what it is. Mm-hmm. One thing I do like to point out to other other countries and other you know other cultures in our you know here in our modern Western age is that here in the United States, porn has been heavily tied to the First Amendment, and that the publishing and the production of porn is an expression of free speech, which just is paramount in our Constitution. And that's something I, I think it puts us on the forefront. It puts us it puts us uniquely positioned to to lead the charge on the sexual revolution that's occurred over the last few decades and to continue it going. And it something that needs to be protected. So that's something I like to I like to bring up as well. I'm like, you know, the United States was almost ready built to make porn. We were just waiting for the technology to show up. We had to wait for oh. cameras and, and lenses and that kind of stuff to show up. We were <laughs> we were ready to do it. <laughs> it was, I you know, when we, we have almost this lost it all with prohibition, area. but we're okay now. <laughs> I have this vision of like the people of Salem or of like, you know, the first like colonial like stuff in, in Virginia. And I'm like, I maybe I just don't know if that was on their mindset as they arrived in a new land. They were Hello, it's Jebediah and it, welcome to my OnlyFans page. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm, I mean, maybe I could have used it. I would have flourished with it. <laughs> my 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 so I, I I have a to step away a little bit and get into kind of a little more fun um, I know you so you've been doing this as your career for several months now has there been mm-hmm. something or someone um, that you particularly like had a really great time with like something that as you're kind of thinking about some of the content you made recently, is there something that is that you were like very excited to do and are be with or partner with? Um, so I had I've had some really great time. I did I did a, I did a road trip over the summer. I managed to go from to, from here to Georgia, Florida, up to Pennsylvania, and over to Chicago, and met a bunch of people along the way. Um, in that vein, uh, Slade, who runs Wolfbound, was absolutely freaking amazing. He was just so. He just made the scene so comfortable. It was obviously something I'd never done before. I'd never been tied up, and and, and it was a bind, it was a it was a bondage scene, mm-hmm. and um, he really took care of me. I I went in blind, and even at one point I was like kind of mummified, and I was all locked up. And I looked around the room, and I'm like, there are five men. I don't know them here, and uh, if they wanted to take advantage of me, they totally could. But I'm totally cool because this is a really great. It was everybody was just so awesome. So I just went with the flow. Um, that was really great. Um, working with Hunter Van Buren in Florida, also great. I stayed with him for a few days. And um, he kind of gave me a good rundown on, on on operations and stuff. It was really really fun. He was much more a little more technically driven. Had a great time there. Um, and uh, right here in town, I've been meeting some really great people. Um, uh, Dylan Hess. He's a he's a little more gorilla style. He's also a really great guy, and he's been doing porn that's a little more like the old Joe Gage stuff. Those storylines more that are more around cruising. And men that are just having sex because they can at that particular moment, not because it's set up in any particular way. I like that he's he's approaching those kinds of storylines again. So, Interesting. yeah. Uh, so so Sl- Slade was great as far as just comfort level and how to converse with people and really reinvigorating my ability to talk to new models. Hunter Van Buren really gave me some operational advice. And uh, Dylan here in town is giving is reinvigorated me as far as stories go. So I, those are the three things I was really looking for over, over the summer. And I got it because I, I, hey. I've got a lot of new skills I've had to pick up and. 
how to run a business, how to shoot, how to do lighting, how to convince people to do porn, how to document and do a production list, how to edit my own porn, buying new powerful hardware. I mean, it's all it's all been part of it. I am hook, line, and sinker an entrepreneur right now, and it is a lot of fucking work. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those three guys, those three guys really helped me out this summer and, and gave me some direction. <laughs> Sorry, what? I got distracted by the comment. Gray in the chat was like, the colonies are for porn. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. That's great. Yeah. I just, I, um, I agree with you about Slade. Um, I actually did modeling for him for the first time, World Bear 2022. Yeah. And um, I'm probably going to, and I've, done i did some at nab and i'm probably going to be doing something this weekend i'm going to chicago myself um for an event um and slate is a part of it so i have a feeling i'm going to be tied up again soon um very soon (laughs) yeah i sure like that Uh, yeah and and but i do i I appreciate the reason i wanted to ask the question you answered it because it wasn't just oh i really wanted to have sex with this person it was you learning more about what you want to do for your career and your life. And that's, I think, more important than getting that, like, checklist or check, check mark on that person um, that you wanted to fuck. Like, there's, there's a major difference. And I think, again, what I'm loving about this conversation is your approach to this is, again, yes, you, your, your approach to this is I, w- I need to make money, if that makes sense. Like your mm-hmm. approach to this is about, I need to make the content so that I can make the money and all that. And how to, this isn't like you said, this isn't like your like second career or kind of thing where you this just isn't a hobby sex. Anymore. Yeah. This isn't a hobby. Yes. That's it. It is not a hobby anymore. It's a career now. And you have to, <sighs> sounds bad, but you have to take it seriously. He's using his assets. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's, well, it's, it's my baby. And like I said, my baby's got to be pretty. And it is very pretty. So here, <laughs> here's here's the thing, though. Like, I mean, talk about I, I hear you, Damon, on the point of, you know, like you're not just doing it for the sake of having sex with people because you want to have sex with them. It was a it was a really good blending. Like for those that weren't aware of what you were doing, it looked like, oh, he's just doing a road trip, which I was like, baby, he is living the fantasy that many people have probably thought about in the course of their life where they're like, can I just fuck across America? Like, is that a thing? <laughs> like, can that happen? And I, you know, and, and I was following you along and you're like, here's this state and here's where I grew up. And here's the first time I like, you know, met a person and, you know, and just stuff. And I was kind of like, I was like, wow, Hadrian's taking it back. He's like, I'm just going to yeah. do these things. And, you know, so you met, I, I'm sure a great many people um, in your in your journey, and uh, you know, and, and and I think that's one of the things that I'm happy to hear is that you were you were doing that as well as you know, in addition to that, like it's kind of like not to use the the probably overly said like improv adage, but it was yes and like I'm I'm saying yes to this opportunity, but I'm also getting something out of it, which brings me to talking about Monster Cub because. Um, I think it is interesting to see the intersectionality of the people that we kind of know over the years or have seen and observed. And he is, I think, one of the individuals within the community that like went and did their own thing and is still doing it to this day. And I think we've seen so many times that people attempt things, um, but it just doesn't catch. It doesn't gel together for whatever reason maybe life gets in the way um COVID sure as hell like was a thing um that disrupted a bunch of shit so you're you're trying to figure stuff out and yet it's also interesting to see how some things are still available as options and I mentioned that because so I'm just like minding my business scrolling along I got bored with Twitter probably nothing on Chatterbait I think I went to like Pornhub and I'm scrolling through and men.com they're like the biggest sponsor I swear of that site or at least the algorithm tells me that and I'm scrolling along and all of a sudden I was like wait a minute is that Hunter and I was like oh how very interesting like and at first i was confused because i thought it was like him like it was him and his own production but then i was like oh no 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 like (laughs) it's this other thing and so it was Mm -hmm. it was funny ironic i guess to see like individuals being able to still do professional work quote unquote 
you know, with a with a certain well-known, I guess I want to say, production company, but also being independent, because I think there was a shift from my understanding that for the longest time, it's like you signed on or you sort of became an exclusive model, depending on what the, the situation was. I think those days have kind of passed. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's in a hustle nowadays, even Hunter. We're all trying to look for different work. I, w I think now um, this work is so just changing so fast and requires so much cooperation across so many different people and different actors that if anybody's only operating inside their own walled garden with their own studio, they're not really operating in the porn community. They're operating their own porn business. So they're, they're an island to themselves. Um, you need people who are in that I'm working with and I'm seeing, they are doing only fans. They're doing just for fans. They're showing up at bear films. They're showing up at uh, Titan men. They're doing go-go dancing at, at bars. Uh, they're going to Western Exposure and, and and doing those events. They're doing porn there. Um, it's 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 a hustle of a bunch of different things. Um, some of them still have day jobs or are doing part time jobs or working at a leather event or working. At a, we have a we have a new bathhouse opening up here in Palm Springs. I'm hoping to work get some work there. So yeah, um, there's it's a, it's a hustle across the across the scope. I'm probably going to be doing um, security at a local bar here just because it's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, th I think that I think there's there's like Hunter is having to do other work across other uh, not having to, but he likes to do porn. And you get this opportunity for someone to say, hey, we'll fly you to L.A. Come fuck these girls and we'll pay you 500 bucks for two days of work and you get your face somewhere else. And it'll pull it'll pull some attention to you if they see the porn. So it's it's a uh, it's all part of the same house of mirrors and making sure you can be seen from every angle. Mm hmm. Speaking of being seen from every angle, I now have this vision. I'm very intrigued by the concept of perhaps a certain Daddy Hadrian working at a new bathhouse in Palm Springs. Because let me tell you, I probably would do at least a triple take as I'm attempting to like check in and get my towel. And then seeing that face on the other side of the, of the divider mm -hmm. being like, has anyone ever told you? Although I, that, <laughs> that wouldn't be a thing. Like, I can't, I can't imagine not knowing. Like in that moment, but I imagine there, it's happened. I've had I've had people say to me, "You look like Michael McQuaig." I'm like, "Oh, really? Thanks." So. I'll let them know. I've gotten that before. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, what's on the the horizon? Do you feel like what What are the new now that you've done these things and you've and you've been successful? What What's next? Like, what What's on your wish list, your dream list? You know, to to so, continue and grow. I think my thing right now is to perfect what I can do so far. I've got to get into a better process of intaking people, getting them shot in porn, getting that edited, getting that output. I've got to get that process. You know, I've got to kind of perfect what I'm doing. I've got to get a good production schedule going down. Um, I've just met someone who's a fantastic cameraman. His name is Richie. I'm hoping to see his content up here soon. He's got a Dresser fans and OnlyFans as well. And um, I've hung out with a guy named Gordon Reese, Gordon Fulton. Him and his husband used to run Factory Video. They were a porn shop for a long time. They, 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 he lives here locally. I've been, he's been giving me a lot of advice when it comes to setting up scenes and, and, and setting up and striking and lighting sets and everything like that. I've got that guy. I've got another friend of mine named Jim. He, uh, he is going to college and doing stage production. So I've got a lot of different elements here. I've got pieces and parts that where I can start putting together more guys for more porn. And picking up and setting up real production sets and having an actual script and all the other stuff we got to get into it. That's kind of the goal. I would like, I want to be as big as Bear Films. Or I want to be big enough that Bear Films can say, hey, hey, Hadrian, come shoot a film for us. That's where I want to be. Mm. Um, I think I think I've got all the pieces and parts that I can make a little production house. Um, right now, I have this office. This is my little office here in Palm Springs. I this is separate from my house. I live in Cathedral City. But I got this for my my day job that I had a long time ago. But I've been I've been making enough money to keep renting this, and it's been great to store my my lighting equipment and my music and all of these damn computers I've got for rendering. And um, <laughs> I want I want to I want to move into a bigger space that I can have a bed in. I want to be able to have, I want I need another room with a bed, a little stage area so I can shoot in inside my studio would be great. Um, I want to do more, and I, I, I'll, I'll say that what I'm finding is the more work I do, the more money I make. That's been the, the rule that's been true so far. Not everything makes a lot of money, but it makes some money, and I learn something from it, and the next time I do it, it makes a little more money. So yeah. as long as I can keep doing that, it's great. I'm very lucky that I have a husband who has a full-time job and is willing to you know, take care of me through some of this. So I, I've got a little bit of time. I can keep trying at it, but you know, I may have to go back to a day job eventually, but I'm sure enjoying it while I can. Yeah, and if I can get off the ground, if I can get off the ground, and we can keep making porn, I'll keep turning people's fantasies into porn. That's what I like doing. I've I've got a website 
professionalpervert.com. All it is is go to a link tree right now. But over time, I plan to to grow it up and be a little production house. There's there's all kinds of rules and ideas about how this stuff is supposed to work. I'm, I'm internalizing them. I'm taking notes. If people want to make a porno, I can tell them how to do it and do it safely. Nice. So I, I have a vision of you possibly uh, following along the lines maybe of like uh, Brandon with Stocky Dudes. Um, and, you know, and launching your own kind of, you know, footprint, so to speak, in mm-hmm. uh, your own way. I'm excited to hear you use the word script. I was going to be funny and be like, script? What the hell's a script? But um... <laughs> what do you need a script for? <laughs> well, you know, people... I always skip uh, over to that part. You need to do their scripts. You skip the B-roll? B-roll. <laughs> I will say this. Just a little bit of this setup is all it takes. Yeah. I will say this much. Sometimes a script is the a good script can get you so engaged that you enjoy the porn more. I like think, I don't I think I, Hunter does a really good job with scripting. Okay. Because it, I agree. It, it really feels more improv though, where he basically says, Hey, this is what's the situation and everybody's ad living to yeah. that point. And so they they don't make that big deal of the script, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so they can get yeah. to the fucking. <laughs> yes. I remember a Absolutely. video where where there's a knock at Hunter's door. He opens up the video, and a certain someone comes in all mean faced, and all of a sudden starts making out with him. <laughs> Yes, yes. Those that's are the types of scripts. So listen, listen, guys. So listen. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me. There's a little so behind they, the scenes coming. I hear it. So I saw listen, that video because I have to subscribe to I, so, uh, I They pay me for that. And I do have a good time, but I am there to fuck. <laughs> and after about the 45 minute mark of us waiting around and getting ready to start, I'm like, Hunter, are we doing this or not? <laughs> So yeah, I I will admit that I'm like let's get through the B-roll and get to this because I'm I'm feeling it. Let's go. Let's now. I'm ready. That I'm ready to have it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I can admit that I was very much like, are we doing this or not? And then he's because sometimes we're like ready to fuck, and then he's like, oh wait, we've got to do B-roll. I'm like, what? Now you're thinking of this? <laughs> <laughs> I love it how like I'm like my dick is hard, and now you want to be do B-roll. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it no, happens. Yeah, I I get it, but yeah, I, I, I just oh. uh, I was like. Oh, wait a minute. This is something I wasn't suspecting because I swear he said something about Hunter way back when he was last mm-hmm. on. His views had changed. <laughs> yeah. So <sighs> I, I so just here's... wanted to make a joking reference to that part. But yeah, I mean, and some of the <laughs> other stuff is a little more on the B-roll role, but it it feels... It feels they know what this is. You know, he they know what this film is. Mm-hmm. We're not going to be serious right. about this. We're going to make just some schlocky little things so we can get to the fucking. And sometimes and you know it's what? nice, sometimes, it, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Yes, I like it. I like it that they make the attempt, and I think it's really great. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, part, of, it's, part, of the, uh, it's part of the art form. In front of my tossed salad? Anyways. In front of my salad. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was going to say that. I was going to say, without, without, without B-roll, it's just guys fucking in front of a salad. <laughs> without her, there's no movie. <laughs> right? You could left her out. Actually, and we're not even the one fucking. Actually, I wasn't right, attracted to either of those two guys, so I could skip that entire video. So. I... Right, right. But, but we wouldn't have a meme if it wasn't for the plot, so to speak, or the script concept that like, just, <laughs> yeah, the it's plot. porn. Come on, let's be serious. How, how realistic is the plot? I mean, and that's kind of funny for me in this moment, Hadrian, having this conversation with you and thinking back to when we were, what, half our age or, or whatever. And we're like watching like, you know, Skinamax and Lady Chatterley's Lover and this crap, like, it's not, well, not crap, but like this whole, like, you know, Ooh, like you know it's sort of sexy or whatever and then if you watched actual porn 
of the time, it's like a, it's like, you know, a Joan Collins novel or something, you know, and it's like there's these kind of lavish sets and like, you know, this whole exposition and, blah, blah, and you're just like, oh, my God, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what it was. I thought I, I the porn I saw, the first porn I saw when I was like nine, ten years old, this woman had her blonde hair done up into a bun. She was covered in oil. She had huge tits. She had gems on. It was so 80s. And I thought, is that what women have to dress up in to have sex? That's a lot of work. Because they were all having sex. Like they were riding these men covered in oil, wearing these huge gems, and their hair is just perfectly put up with just the right mounds of strings hanging down. It was it's some kind of hustler porn, of course. But it was so overproduced. And I'm like, God, is this what women have to put up with? Why is Always she wearing heel. heels? Why is she in the heel? <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Right. This well, that, all of that's this probably all this that's... porn that I snuck from my brother's uh, uh, bedside drawer. This is why I'm gay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I was gonna say the heels are there because it's probably a kink. Like that that's a fetish thing. Like, you know, True. like there's something going on with that. So Grace is a live chat. Sometimes the script provides engagement, and other times the script just becomes proof of these men are the reason that ball gags are invented. <laughs> uh, that is true. <laughs> You're like, no, 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 no. Shh, shh, shh. No, no. <laughs> Acting no. is a secondary trait to having a big dick. The the only <laughs> thing I want you coming the only thing I want coming out of your mouth is grunts and groans. <laughs> Even Dan, at least change it up, please. Yeah. So that being said, Hadrian, amongst the four of us, we have like viewed countless minutes, if not hours, <laughs> uh, days of content. What do you want to see in the future of like adult, you know, entertainment? Like, is there anything that you're like, Hmm. Like you want to see a callback to something. You want to see a return to things. There's, there's stuff that you've kind of wondered about and been like, I don't think I've ever seen whatever that is. I'd like to see porn across the board have the, the kind of economic power it had in the eighties and nineties when they made money. I wish they had, I wish that could happen again. I know that requires media control and that kind of thing. I wish I wish the industry was as well supported and not under attack. I wish there weren't laws made specifically to affect our industry or the ability to view porn or being attacked on the gay community in general. I wish that the I wish the porn industry's issues could be separated from the LGBT community a little bit and be handled differently instead of being glommed together with, you know, all of the shames of porn being glommed on the LGBT and all the LGBT shames being glommed on the porn. I wish there was a separation there. Um I, I, I wish that all of our economy was doing well across the board because porn is very much an indicator at the very, very end of capitalism. Porn is an indicator to how well we're doing, I think. And right now I can tell you that it, people are barely able to pay for their porn. And it's because they're not able to pay for the houses. Inflation is too high. Gas is too expensive. Uh, they can't get people to retire. They can't get people to help. They can't get people to work under people. Um, and everybody's generally disaffected by our economy and our, our, our shitty environment. Um, and I wish right wingers would shut the fuck up for a minute and realize what good porn is for them. That it's it's helping them grow. It's helping them expand. It's helping them make them progressive. Porn isn't necessarily making them woke, but it is you know waking them up a little bit after they come. <laughs> I, I don't think waking. I think. Up, I say, but that's porn, porn has definitely been feeding right wingers, um, you know, left wing ideologies for a long time in a very subversive way, and I, I wish I hope that continues. I think that um, right wing communities starting to attack libraries, school libraries, starting to attack uh, video stores, or attacking the internet, or attacking media companies are just examples of them trying to control narratives and say we don't want to hear these messages. And like these messages are important to you. They're they're telling you about your history and telling you about where your future is going to be. And porn is part of that conversation and narrative. And I want I want everyone to do better so porn can do better. Right. Um, but I will say, if there was one format I want to see come back that I want to do personally, is I miss these guys. This is Dirk Yates. Okay. If you're all familiar with this particular format of porn, no. he did this porn in the late in the late nineties. All he would do was get Marines, like young privates and PFCs and corporals. He would get these really young 20 or 21 year old Marines 
to come into his hotel room or his apartment or whatever. And they would be like, I've never been with a guy before. I just want 200 bucks and I just want to jerk off on camera for it. He's like, cool, jerk off on camera. And sometimes he'd blow them and sometimes he wouldn't. But he was making enough money that he could pay these Marines and he'd get their signature on a piece of form and that was it. And he made tons and tons of videos. I would love to make videos like this, but with daddies across America. I'd love to have enough money that I can cross the country. And I, I, I went on the road trip. The road trip was great. One of the greatest things I learned in the road trip was the difference between cruising and porn. It is really hard to turn a cruising situation into a porn situation because it's really hard to get a guy you're blowing to say, can you sign this 2257 while I'm blowing you? And can you? <laughs> I mean, you're happen. not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> like, there's, like, I will, yeah. like, something that has always been <laughs> intriguing <laughs> slash interesting to me. Like, we see it all the time. We see all these videos. Like, um, the one that comes to mind is like Bait Bus, as like where these like yeah, there are exactly. these yes. like where they're driving around and they're picking people up and it's all this stuff and the fantasy is there, but when you start thinking about it and going like down to like. How, how am I seeing this? Either they're all in on it and it's all just like, you know, actors playing a role, as it were, or it is like random whatever encounters. But at the end of the day, someone is signing something to give you the ability to actually put it out there. Like someone is consenting or agreeing mm-hmm. to allow right. it to happen. When, they, when the camera thank, moved, thank you, thank you, moved to Lawrence. a different part of, of the van where there was nobody there. There was a cut that you, the invisible cut, the camera like stopped, was held in place. They signed a yeah. form. The camera yeah, returned I, recording. It looked like nothing had, no time had passed. Yes. And, then and I'm aware of that, but like get to, to Hadrian's point, that's sort of the, like you can't really do it in media res. You can't literally do it like right when it's happening. You're going to have to like have that conversation or, something along those lines which i mean in they're a all ways plants. i mean in the yeah, end they're in, all plants in those things yeah well i'm not talking about the plants i'm, I'm talking I, about like what hadrian's talking about the specific ones that he's talking about well, which is like so hang on so <laughs> so hang on so you're right they did they did have all the forms signed you're right they did they had to do 2357 somebody got paid something like that always happened but those guys were real people. Those some of those yeah. guys were real men who were like, "Hey, I'm certainly separated from a wife, and I need to make three hundred bucks. Let's do this." And they did the porn. And some of those guys came back a few months later, like, "Hey, my wife found out about it. Can you take it down?" No. <laughs> some of those guys didn't have real. Some of those guys had real dramas and real things they had to go through mm-hmm. after they made those decisions. And you know that that's something you have to, that happens. Um, but no, I, I would like to get back to an era where I can find those kind of men again. I want to find those men who need three hundred bucks and have. 30 minutes to spare so I can pull them into my hotel room and get a video out of them and, and then show the world and be like, hey, look at these really hot, sexy men and here's their story. Hey, Let's even, hear about them for a minute. Even, I, wanna, even if I, you're would like, to, I would like to get back to making that kind of porn. Even if you're like blurring their face or something like that. No. No, no, no. no. They're, they're gonna, you you got to own that shit. You gotta, it's got to be your face and your voice on these on these yeah. stories. I, wanna, yeah, I want men to, rep- I want men to tell this. I want to go to right-wing areas of the country and have those men tell us their stories so that I can broadcast it right back into them. I think there's a documentary the about tea, that. Sis. <laughs> yeah. That's the tea, sis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hadrian's got a mission. Um, I, I'm telling you, if these if these right wingers start to win, or quote unquote win, if we start sliding backwards on our laws and, and censorship and that kind of thing, you will find me moving to some deep red country to 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 be very loud and be very angry at them and say, no, I'm here to make porn come for me. So yeah, I am I am all about leading this charge, and and I believe that this is an important part of our culture, and I, I I'm I'm going to carry it through. I, I think the I'm big thing making is making it. I'm going to keep. I'm going to be producing it on the whatever rules and restrictions they want to stick on me. I will. I will bite and gnash them the whole way while I do it. Big. It, it, we're such a capitalist society. Why can't people make money doing stuff with consent? I agree. With signing yes. official forms. Sure. There's the laws that you're abiding by. Everybody's well, correct. Porn, yeah, everybody's giving their consent. Porn edges. Porn edges up against one thing. You can't pass a law. In all of human history, no matter where you go, the moment you pass a law that says this kind of person can't have sex with that kind of person or people cannot have sex 
or, or can only have sex to certain effects, the people lose their fucking shit. They, it does not work. The, that culture falls apart and people start evacuating those countries. I think Europe lost their shit in the 1400s because of it. I think it's happened to it's, it, China. They had their one their one person policy for a long time. And I think they had to bite a few bullets on that. It's not a good look when you start telling your citizens you can't have sex. Wait, we, we're mammals. We're, we're living primate creatures. And you're telling us we can't do the one biological function we're all designed to do. Fuck you. No matter what kind of culture society you're building, you can't build it if your people can't fuck. Yeah. And also, so I think I think I think that's a really important aspect, and, and yeah. porn is is a leading is a is a leading indicator of that. And and people need to get off their their shit and be like, look, if you don't like it, don't pay for it. People keep saying saying, oh, well, if you don't like it, don't just don't buy it, and then vote with your dollar. And this is like gaming industry movies television anything like that if you you don't like it don't watch it and if somebody that you know was in it and you now know i'm sorry you can't you can't unsee that or or unhear about that you're just gonna have to live with it it was their choice because that's a personal thing that they chose to do who the fuck cares it's not you. It's not right. actually affecting you. Besides people's opinions getting in the way of everything when it really shouldn't matter. I, and, and porn is just like any industry, too. There's good people. There's bad people. There's good business ideas. There's bad ones. You know, it's up to us to weed those things out, keep those conversations going and report the good things and, you know, and, and support the support the things that are really good. So it's it's uh, it's a self-policing industry and us having really close ties with, you know, podcasters is super important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the the only thing that's changed from when those videos were made to the landscape of today is how interconnected the world is through the technology. I I, I think it's the only thing that immediately comes to mind, and I'm like, mm, like. Uh, that that would be the the reason people wouldn't be willing to participate is because they know how quickly like once it's out there maybe it's out there like and there's no there's no turning back from that and i think we're still struggling with the the concept of like my privacy of my like owning my my individuality whatever that may be um and and it's difficult, and I don't know what the what the resolution of it is because I think what you have as a vision is is great, hot sounding, like would be definitely something I know I watch and pay for. Um, and the <laughs> the thing of it is, at the same time, I'm like, well, who's who's going to be you know willing to to do that stuff? Like, are there daddies out there who would do it? Absolutely, but that nuance of the you know. The conservatism, I think that's the part where I'm like, well, I don't know. Like how 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 that will work as far as like their participation, I guess, is what I'm thinking of. For being a It'll first be very world interesting country, to see how country, for being a first world country, it, we are very backwards as a country compared to a good portion of the world. I'm not gonna say everywhere, but a good Something, portion. Yeah. One thing that porn has over other forms of media is that it can't be faked. And when you have sci-fi, you can have green alien blood. When you've got horror, you can have red food coloring for blood. You know, that kind of stuff. You know, you can fake all the ass. You, you don't have to have real sheep guts on set anymore. So with porn, though, somebody's eventually got to shoot their load. Um, or, you know, show their pussy or and stick a dick in it or whatever. You know, there has to be something. Whatever the act, sexual act is, you got you to do the goods. You can't fake your way through some of it. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how AI plays a part in all this conversation. Because what happens whenever... I, I I have a theory that no that human beings are not going to pay for human expressions that do not contain humans. We are not going to pay for art that wasn't made by a human being. We're not going to pay for porn that doesn't have real human beings doing the acts in it. When I can sit down with with a steam engine and say I want these actors to do these things and they just and it's CGI and it happens on screen, where there's no risk, no danger, no nothing. Nobody's really having sex. It's just a bunch of really good looking CGI. Is that porn? First of all. Um, because nobody's actually doing anything. And how does that affect my psyche whenever I see something that is so vulgar, obscene, or sexual, but it's not actually being performed by human beings? 
what is that going to do to conservatives when their narratives when they say, oh, people doing those acts is corrupting our morals? Well, now we don't have real people doing it. We just have people imagining it and typing it into a computer. Is that worse? Um, when, it, when, you're, when your son or daughter has to sit at a keyboard and type in the porn they want versus just going to Pornhub and clicking on something. It's one thing to know your daughter likes cream pies. It's another for her to type it in. Cream pies from my coach with his face on it. When they, when they get all those this technological power at their fingertips and they're more able to more explicitly request what they're asking for, what does that mean for the sexual attitudes of their community? What is it? What, what are their parents going to complain about then? It's no longer like, how dare you make that content for my child? Now it's, how dare my child so explicitly request this content? <laughs> Just think of the I, hollow novels on the holodeck of, of the Starship Enterprise. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody talks about the sexual things that Barkley was doing in there because they they hint that Barkley was having sex with those holograms. <laughs> All right, so I didn't believe we were going to make this pivot, but Lower Decks has inferred in the animated series about cleaning out what, like the remnants of things from the holodeck. David, if you haven't seen it, it was like the scream out loud moment for me when that happened, and I was like. Did they? Oh, yes, they did. They totally inferred that there is biomatter that remains after a holodeck, like, you know, mm -hmm. engagement. And I was like, wow, like, that is so wild. And yep. what this hell? Well, I mean, it, it, it has to go somewhere. That's true. Somewhere. <laughs> David's trying to process this. <laughs> the, the, it, I mean, so yeah, to be fair, at that point in time, you would think that they would at least have the technology that that when the whole, when you say computer and program, it can dematerialize all the other non-human. Okay. Participant matter. This also implies that it's at some point in, in that in some point in that development. I mean, there is a bio computer filter. in program, and there was a bunch of splatting sounds. <laughs> it, as the holograms dematerialized and the blobs just fell to the ground. Oh, we need a program to take care of that. <laughs> I mean, to, to be fair, they have bio filters. I mean, we, I mean, the the uh, holodeck technology is based off of transporter technology. They're 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 cousins. They should be able to essentially convert that matter to energy. Well, to be fair, so, every time you've ever seen a holodeck and they end the program, there's nothing in there but the void of the black and the yellow grid. So something tells me that the, the and it's sophisticated enough to contain things. Hence, in lower decks, you find out that there are these repository canisters of what the biofilters capture. Wow, so there's matter. something. So, but I agree with you. That was one of the funniest things I think I've heard on this podcast, maybe ever, about the concept of after you end the program, the splat that 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 would occur. I'm telling you that that, that when you end program, the the computer doesn't just get rid of the holograms. It also does the technological equivalent of digitation from D and D. Oh man! So. If you guys want to, if you guys want to know someone you might want to reach out to who may be interested in being on your podcast, there's a guy named um, Oh Sean Farrick. He does yes. Star Trek oh, yes. 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 on Culture. YouTube. Yep. Yes. All he tracking. also he he also has an OnlyFans called yes. Prince Trek, and he makes a lot of Star Trek porn. It's very fucking hot. He is really really awesome. So yeah, but uh, yeah, he's 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 he probably knows a lot about this. <laughs> I am, I am, I am, a, I am very intrigued on this concept. I, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I could put that at in the initial outreach email. And be like, All right, so hey, hear me, hey, just Sean, hear me out. Jeff and I, and Jeff and I are are huge fans of you on Trick Culture. We would like you to come on to to our Cubs Out Loud podcast to talk yeah. about uh, Trek and porn. And well, he's, he was also on a um, he was also on a podcast called the Feminist Babysitter, which talked about a lot of feminist issues in LGBT culture and media and that kind of thing. So he has a lot of intersectional knowledge. It might be it might be useful. 
I think it's pan too. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> David is just taking it all in. David's like, <laughs> y'all are looking at, 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 at us like you nerds. No, you nerds. <laughs> no, that's I. I'm just I'm still on the holodeck like stuff being there. That's where I'm at still. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't mind still, me. I'm he's just from the back of the conversation. The <laughs> yeah. It's gonna take me a second to get over that. <laughs> wow. So, anyway. With that being said, um, I think we should be moving into to wrapping up. But uh I wanna say this. Obviously, Hadrian, it, it goes, you know, almost without saying, but we'll say it for the record. It's been so enjoyable having you with us today. And we always love having you. So anytime you want to come back or, you know, engage in a, in a conversation, you really hit on something that I would I feel like there could be more conversation about the concept of AI in the adult industry and what that um, potentially could mean for mm -hmm. things in that case. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's showing up in all my porn already. I've got, I've got porn stories on nifty that are being written by AI. Now we've got art. That's of course being designed by AI of whatever character you've got, they can make porn of it now. And then of course it's starting to come to little video clips where people can type in, you know, I don't know, Tom Hanks and J Jenna Jameson fucking, you know, or something like that. they can type that in and get a five second clip of it. If they want it's, it's on its way. And there are definitely people in our community who can answer those questions. I think I think it'd be fun to explore. Oh my gosh! Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, I will, so, like I agree with Gary. Cinema, Grizzly like, Adams and Commander Riker. <laughs> fucking yes. I kind of knew that. I kind of knew that was coming. Bear cubs of a certain age, <laughs> and their and their fixation on their coming of age. Uh... Oh dear. Yeah, it, well, here's sense. here's here's the thing. Here's a couple of things. I, I would uh, one, I an ask for a guest, and uh, uh, two, a actually, I forgot everything I was about to say. Is part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no ask for the audience uh, and ask for an audience and maybe maybe for everybody here especially for your younger audience if grizzly adams and and uh, uh uh john goodman uh maybe even george went were some of our inspirations during our coming out out what are the younger generations mm. inspirations what, what, are, what are what are their inspirations over the past like say oh. 10 years to today celebrity jerk off fantasies i think it tends to focus well where the media was more comfortable showing so like daniel francesi is a, is a huge you know late millennial and early gen z they're very into his image um uh not what was his name? Not Tim the Toolman Taylor, but who was his sidekick? Al Borland. Um, um, yeah, Al Borland a little bit earlier. And that 90s kids would go for that. Oh, what was his real name? Richard, Richard Karn. Karn. Gosh darn. Woo, that took a second. Yeah, I was getting Richard, and then you said Karn, and then I'm like, oh, okay. And then you've got, what's his name from Modern Family? Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple of guys from there, actually. Actually, you, actually, you count three of them if you count... Um, the dad as well. Because you got the bear couple, and then you've got Al Bundy counts as a bear dad, I think. But that makes sense. But for the are any younger listeners to the podcast, let oh, us. You're thinking like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm curious who they have too. Might be you. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> probably, probably Just, not. A I, I do get a lot of guys say their first porn experiences later on but, in their let, adult life. Let, you know, let me let me adjust. Yeah, let me adjust the ask. That was not in porn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you're thinking like actual like. Oh, I, I bet a lot of them have Kevin Chamberlain there. on that list. Like actual uh, stories. And... There's what's uh, his name uh, from The Sopranos. James Gandolfini. Thank you, James Gandolfini. 
Mm-hmm. Anyways, I'm. I just, I'll put, I'm just going to put celebrity as the as the <laughs> as tag the tag because I was sitting there. I not list all of them. I can't I can't name all these. To, just all uh, these. celebrity fantasies. Who who are your celebrity fantasies? Not, not to mention the later millennials and early Gen Zers also started getting more into furries. So they have they have examples like Bowser. <laughs> oh oh yeah yeah yeah, and Bowser even. Probably even earlier on, he just got sexier as as the uh, technology and video games grew. All right. Well, let's just say since you since you brought up Bowser, I'm going to make this the side mark as we wrap up. When Wreck It Ralph came out and Zangief came up on the screen, mm-hmm. baby, let me tell you, Zangief, there was yeah. an awakening or a reawakening, and I was like, wow. I was mm-hmm. like, that's a thing. I I do that's- have I I do have. I did purchase Street Fighter Six, <laughs> which has Angief in there. It also has E Honda. Mm-hmm, 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 like the mm-hmm. bigger Very boys. sexy. Baraka, of course. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. Now, game. is Six the one that has the mod for yeah, the, right, the yeah. you could get Blanca, the mod for no it, clothing? Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's out there. I I haven't actually searched it to actually like try playing it with the with the mod, but because I think we I don't know if we actually if it was a pick of ours. I know we talked about the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick of mine. Yeah. So and I was like I was like there it is. Of course we're gonna have like you know our favorite characters naked while they're fighting. Mm-hmm. And then of course you can have sex with your. Your bear druid over on Baldur's Gate three. Oh yeah, that's true. Literal sex with the bear. Yep, he can literally transform into a bear, and then you can have sex with him, or you can have sex with him before he turns into a bear. It's your choice. Just not during the trans transformation. You might get. I mean, I'm sure there's an option for it. You just have to look for it. Well, I, I, I think you would. I think <laughs> you would need to get. Game. There's all. There's a role for it. Yeah, I think you need to get a wear bear curse in order to do that. If you, if in you that case, it doesn't matter. Check, yeah, he's going to transform while he's inside you. I don't. Well, okay, I wasn't quite thinking that, but that brings up a good point because that'd be like, what kind of spell do you have to put on yourself? Like, like, I don't know. Like, well, this is gonna... it's, a, it's a wild shape, which is in a spell. <laughs> Like I don't know. Obviously, I don't know DD. So the only thing comes to my mind is I'm like, can you make your hole like an infinite ho- of holding? Is that how that works? Oh, but it's anyways. all herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All herself, which allows you to <laughs> transform <laughs> part of your body parts, <laughs> and like you can that, give yourself gills you so or much, other Adrian, things. For joining us, <laughs> it's been great having you. With that, you guys are amazing. All right, so so my pr- my prompt for the audience is share with us your celebrity fantasies, especially you younger ones. I want to know what 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 more for the the younger generation is. Yeah, but anyways, there's plenty of ways to do that. To move directly into our closing. Uh, pop over to the website, comesoutloud.com. Leave a comment on the blog. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail. At 361 CL Clock, that's 361 265 8255. You can do it on Facebook, Twitter, right here on YouTube, where you can like, comment, and subscribe. You can also join our Entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. And if you want to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can check out our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. We get various accoutrements, such as a flexibility for accessibility shirt or made to be. Lick pear chair spooned and love shirt over on our Zazzle store at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. You can find some of those designs, including the flexibility for accessibility shirt, uh, was designed by Smashy, which you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud. I think I got an email saying we just got a new patron. <gasps> Yeah, so uh, in the midst of the show, I got a notification on my watch here that said we got uh, someone named Hadrian who uh, pledged (laughs) as little as a buck a month. 
<laughs> I sure did. Look at uh, that. And you could just send us a donation. I realized I wasn't following it. I had to. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud uh, to send us a donation. You can find us on various podcasting platforms for the audio feed, as well as, you know, we do have the entire show listed, uh, all of our videos listed in the uh, Cubs Out Loud podcast, as well as our CBLDR podcast on YouTube. And Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Play, Amazon, and Audible, too. You can find me anywhere in the internet. It's Box Hat, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box Something or Other, although I haven't really been on the platform much lately. So, But you can find me there. Damon? Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most beer-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. For the safe for work one, you want to go to DMAGamer79. Nice. If you want to find me online, I'm pretty much everywhere as Gabber73. Um, I still am on Twitter.com with the Gabber73XXX. That happens to be where all the adult content is, and that's how I was keeping track of our illustrious guest here with us today. <laughs> Uh, Hadrian, if people want to follow you, uh, I believe you made mention of it earlier. There's this website, professional-pervert.com. That's me, professional-pervert.com is where you can find a link tree to all my goodies. I am for adults only, of course. Yes. And yeah, that's where you'll find a link to my, my Daddy McQuaig just for fans, my Daddy McQuaig only fans, Blue Sky Twitter, and some links to my husband's stuff as well. Oh, yeah. yay. Yeah, oh, there he is. Yeah. It's not like I have the page up already. Anyways, <laughs> say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all. Thank you, guys.